Arroyo. Here. Barron. Here. Brewer. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Comrie. Here. Crowley. Thank you. Crowley. Dickens. Delon. Here. Drum. Here. Eugene. Here. Barreras. Here. Fiddler. Here. Foster. Garodnik. Gennaro. Gentili. Gonzalez. Greenfield. Here. Halloran. Present. Ignizio. Here. Jackson. Here. James. Ku. Here. Coppell. Here. Oslowitz. Here. Lander. Here. Lappin. Here. Levin. Mark Viverito. Mealy. Here. Mendez. Here. Nelson. Here. Palma. Here. Rekia. Here. Reina. Here. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Sanders. Present. Seabrook. Here. Ulrich. Here. Vaca. Here. Fallone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Van. Here. Weprin. Here. Williams. Otto. Here. Rivera. Here. Speaker Quinn. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much, my colleagues. Please rise for the invocation being delivered by Reverend Laura Jervis uh, from the First Chinese Presbyterian Church. I invite you to prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, for the work you have given us to do. And especially we thank you for this city, which is our chosen home, and whose foundation is built upon tolerance, acceptance, and the promise of a better life. We come from many different places and traditions to serve the people of your city with the gifts you have given us. With humility and gratitude, we dedicate our labors to you. We thank you, O oh God, for the examples of excellence in education and sportswomanship you have given us today. We thank you for the extraordinary example of community service and heroism we have witnessed. We ask that each of these individuals who are honored today may go from strength to strength. We are grateful for the faithful witness of the First Chinese Presbyterian Church over these hundred years, welcoming waves of immigrants from China and serving the Chinatown community. And so we are reminded of the blessings shared by all people of faith that in this city we are free to worship as we choose and to live in a free society. We thank you for each member of this council. We recognize the personal sacrifices each have made to hold public office and the great responsibilities they shoulder. We ask you to enlighten their minds to know what is true and just, strengthen their wills to fulfill their duties, enlarge their hearts to care for the most vulnerable among us. And we pray for the staff who support the work of this body and serve the constituents in our neighborhoods with diligence and patience. We lift up the speaker, Christine Quinn, and ask that you endow her with wisdom and courage for the challenges she faces on behalf of us all. 
we name before you the Honorable Margaret Chin, who is a source of great strength and pride to our community. We thank you for her keen intellect, dedicated to the pursuit of justice for all, and for her commitment to public service. And now, O oh God, as you embrace this city that you love so much, lead us all in the ways of justice and peace. Amen. Council Member Chin. Motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. So ordered. Adoption of the minutes, Council Member Holloran. Motion to make the stated meeting uh, minutes of August 25th, 2010 adopted as printed. So ordered. Messages, messages and papers from the mayor. M279, submitting Roberta Washington for reappointment to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Rules, privileges, and elections. M280, submitting Mark Janai for appointment to the Taxi and Limousine Commission. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communications from the city, county, and borough offices. M281, third party transfer program. Housing and buildings. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call ups. M282 to M284. If we could please get a roll call on the coupled land use call ups, Mr. Majority Leader. Ordered. Arroyo. Barron. Aye. Brewer. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Comrie. Present. Aye. Crowley. Dickens. Aye. Delon. Aye. Drum. I'd like to vote aye and ask for permission to uh, vote on all general orders before the council. Ordered. I vote aye on all orders. Thank you. Eugene. Aye. Ferreras. Aye. Fiddler. Aye. Foster. Aye. Gorodnik. Aye. Gennaro. Ventilli. Aye. Gonzalez. Greenfield. Yes. Halloran. Aye. Ignizio. Yes. Jackson. Aye. James. Koo. Aye. Coppell. Yes. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lander. Aye. Lappin. Yes. Levin. Mark Viverito. Yes. Mealy. Aye. Can I have permission to vote on all land use call ups? So ordered. Thanks. Aye. Mendez. Aye. Nelson. Consent to vote aye on all general order calendar items. So ordered. Thank you. Bye. Palma. Aye. I don't do this anymore. I used to do it. Rekia. <laughs> Aye. Reina. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Sanders. Aye. Seabrook. Yes, so with the uh, unanimous consent, I'd like to vote um, I on all land use call ups and general call ups. So ordered. I vote I. Mealy. Oh, I on all general call ups. So ordered. And ordered. Aye. Ulrich. I on all. Baca. I. Ballone. Van Brema. Aye. Van. Aye. Weprin. Aye, and I'd like to request unanimous consent on voting on all call ups and couple general order items. So ordered. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Williams. Otto. Rivera. Have a right. Speaker Quinn. Today's land use call ups were adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, with zero in the negative. Communications from the speaker? 
Thank you very much, Mr. Majority Leader. I first want to thank uh, all of my colleagues for wearing the I am anti-violence wrist bracelets today. I want to thank in particular Councilmember Helen Foster whose idea it was to make sure that we did something at today's stated council meeting to stand in solidarity with the victims of what I think is the most horrible hate crime I can remember in the history of the city of New York. And by simply wearing these bracelets, I think we send a message of thanks to those victims who were brave enough to come forward and tell the police what happened to them, which is a very difficult thing to do. Their bravery has enabled the police to get dangerous individuals off the streets and protect other New Yorkers. I think we also send those victims a message of support, hopefully to let them know that all of us in the City Council and the City of New York are praying for them and rooting for their swift recovery. We also send a message that we in the City Council take hate crimes incredibly seriously and that they are quite simply just something we will not tolerate in our city and want to make it clear that the actions of the individuals who perpetrated this most heinous of hate crimes do not represent the majority of the opinions of the citizens of the City of New York, which is a city, city built and is made great by its diversity. So I want to thank everyone for participating in this today. We are voting today on a package of important pieces of legislation which relate to our ongoing efforts of greening the city of New York and our ongoing work to take the Green Code's task force recommendations and make them the laws of our city. I want to thank Laura Popa and Bob Aham and Jeff Haberman and Bed Goodman and Samara Swanson and Robert Newman and Margaret Nelson for their work on this package of legislation today. I also want to thank Chairperson DeLon, the chair of our Housing and Buildings Committee, which shepherded this package through his committee. So thank you very much, Chair DeLon. I also want to thank Chair Gennaro for his ongoing work on environmental legislation in and out of his committee. I want to thank the sponsors of these bills, Councilmember Inez Dickens, Councilmember Matthew Eugene, Councilmember Brad Lander, and Councilmember Jessica Lappin. Intros 236, 264, 268, and 271, all A versions, together represent the most significant water conservation steps the City of New York has ever taken. Every New Yorker uses about 125 gallons of water a day. When these bills become law, the first year that they are in effect, they will enable us to save close to a billion gallons of water. Just to give you an idea, that is the equivalent of the reservoir in Central Park. Taking these steps, upgrading uh, the cooling systems we use when we build new buildings or renovate buildings, changing the type of water fountains we use when we build buildings or update buildings, uh, moving forward with changing and enabling New Yorkers to have greater choice in the type of toilets they use and having alarm system so building owners know when water is leaking. All of those together, as I said, are going to save a tremendous amount of water. And often in the city of New York, we take water for granted. But the truth is water is a scarce resource. It's something that other parts of the state and other parts of the country and certainly other parts of the world struggle every day to provide to their citizens. So not only are we going to save water and make our city in a more environmentally friendly city, we are literally going to help the world meet the water needs of its people. And I want to thank everyone for working on this legislation. Again, particularly the chair of our Housing Buildings Committee, Eric Delon. Let me first call on uh, the, and we're going to call on all the sponsors of the bill, but let me start with Councilmember Inez Dickens. Then we'll hear from Dr. Eugene, Councilmember Lander, and Councilmember Lappin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I want to commend uh, Speaker Quinn and Mayor Bloomberg for their collaborative efforts in convening the Green Codes Task Force to explore conservation me measures. I want to also thank Russell Unger, the Executive Director of the Urban Green Council, for his hard work in chairing the Green Codes Task Force. I cannot forget the dedicated staffers who put in long hours in preparing this comprehensive legislative package. The future of our children, the future of our planet, depends in large part on what we do today to conserve and preserve our natural resources. 
Water is one of our most significant natural resources. Future generations will not survive without adequate water supplies. These bills will help make our city more water efficient. Intro 263A, addressing water usage with regards to industrial use and commercial structures is a significant step that will conserve millions of gallons of water. I thank my colleagues for supporting this legislative conservation measure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assistant Majority Leader Dickens. Next, on the, uh, we're going to call on uh, Council Member Eugene, who is also a sponsor of the legislation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Entro 264A is a bill that will uh, help substantially reduce uh, the amount of plastic waste produced uh, from bottled water. Currently, commercial establishments are required to provide a certain amount of drinking in Fontaine, front end, depending on the number of occupants, with the exception of restaurants. However, commercial establishments are allowed to substitute up to 50% of the drinking fountain requirement with other machines or devices capable of dispensing water. Unfortunately, many building owners and managers choose to substitute drinking fountain not with water coolers or other alternatives that provide free water, but with bottled water dispensers or soda machine that often put individuals in a position to pay for water. This bill will address this issue by removing bottled water dispensers as a substitute for all new commercial establishment and those undergoing major renovations. In addition, this bill also clarified the definition of drinking fountain to include a separate faucet at at least 10 inches high above the water basin in order to allow people who wish to freely fill up in a container of their own bottle the ability to do so. If enacted, this bill will not only help reduce the significant amount of plastic waste we use when purchasing bottles of water, but also encourage people encourage more people to drink water as a healthy and sustainable choice. New York City drinking water remains one of the cleanest and well regarded in the world. And I'm proud to work in this legislation which will make our consumption of water more energy efficient and less damaging on our environment. Finally, I want to thank the speaker, my colleagues, and the legislative staff to the, for the support and assistance on this critical piece of legislation and also for the City Council commitment to enacting legislation that will protect our environment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councilmember Eugene. Uh, Councilmember Lander. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This bill is a win-win-win uh, by installing alarms that will notify owners and building managers when large systems are leaking, like a water tank on the roof or a swimming pool, leaks that might otherwise go unnoticed or cause substantial amounts of both water leakage and damage to buildings can be stopped quickly, uh, saving water, saving the owners money, and saving tenants an enormous uh, headache. Uh, as the speaker said earlier, just a small leak from a faucet that, uh, from a toilet that might otherwise go unnoticed can leak thousands of gallons of water, uh, of water a week or a month, and this bill will help make sure that stops here and now. Uh, I want to thank the speaker uh, for her leadership and Chairman DeLon and say that I'm honored that the first bill that I'm sponsoring is part of this broader effort as part of the Green Coats Task Force, which I really think has been a model process for making comprehensive change to our building code to bring it into the 21st century, make it sustainable on water issues today, on energy issues earlier. Uh, very technical, very comprehensive, but done in a thorough way with all stakeholders at the table and one I'm proud to be a part of. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councilmember Lander, and our final uh, sponsor is Councilmember Lappin. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. Our population in the city is growing and our water supply is not. So I'm happy to be part of this package that conserves our precious, delicious, fabulous New York City drinking water. Thank you very much. And I want to thank uh, Chair Comrie for his work on the land use items. And that concludes communications from the speaker.
All right, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Discussion of general orders? Seeing none, we're going to move on to reports of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 479, Organization Funding. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 226 and Reso 483 through LU 228 and Reso 485. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 263A, Reducing Waste of Potable Water. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 264A, In Relation to Drinking Fountains. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 268A, Preventing Water Waste in Buildings. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 271A, Enhancing Water Efficiency. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 177 to LU 193 on page 7. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council in Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 194 and Reso 486 through LU 196 and Reso 488. Coupled on general orders. LU 209 and Reso 489 and LU 210 and Reso 490, various UDAPs. Coupled on general orders. LU 213 and Reso 491, zoning map amendment. Coupled on general orders. LU 214 and Reso 492 through LU 216 and Reso 494. Coupled to be filed pursuant to a letter of withdrawal. LU 218 and Reso 495, UDAP Bronx. Coupled on general orders. LU 219 and Reso 496 through LU 224 and Reso 501, zoning map changes. Coupled on general orders. General order calendar. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Uh, coupled on general orders, and this, at this point, Mr. Majority Leader, I'd ask for a roll call on all the items that have been coupled on the general order calendar, please. So ordered. Arroyo. Aye. Barron. Aye. Brewer. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Comrie. Yes, to all. Dickens. Aye. Delon. Aye and all. Eugene. Aye. Barreras. Aye. Fiddler. Aye. Foster. Aye and all. Garodnik. Aye. Gennaro. Gentili. Aye and all. Gonzalez. Greenfield. Uh, with a heavy heart, I give up the water pressure in my future showers. In the interest of saving New York's most viable resource, I vote aye at all. <laughs> Halloran. Maybe excuse explain my vote. I agree. Yes. Um, I will vote aye to all except uh, intros 264 and 271. Uh, once again, we are in the business now of regulating crap. Uh, and I think there is a huge amount of it being shoveled on our homeowners. And it continues to happen at this council from top to bottom. Uh, we keep forgetting that every time we impose one of these restrictive regulations, anyone doing so much as a bathroom remodeling are now subject to these rules. And we just spent millions of dollars installing smart water meters so that we can nickel and dime every homeowner out of every flush that they have and every drink that they take. Furthermore, commercial establishments, which are providing a service to the public by providing and affording water fountains uh, for people to be able to drink out of now have to pay extra money in order to comply with this rule and ensure that there is an additional tap so that people can fill up their canteens at these public watering holes. It's absurd. The government has many more important things to be doing and certainly since water usage has actually decreased in the city of New York almost 40 percent over the last 10 years and we have nonetheless charged more and more to each of our consumers to use the water of the city of New York, despite the fact that they have done what we've asked of them, conserved water, and done it the right way, we still charge them more. I think it's laughable, and these things are not going to have a long-term impact on water usage, because the important places where our water is wasted are still going to continue to waste, those, uh, waste the water, and what we're going to wind up doing is charging our homeowners and our business owners who are willing to provide public services and provide fountains and provide uh, facilities for the public are going to turn around and say it's not worth the effort anymore. Uh, so I vote absolutely no to 264 and 271, aye to the rest. Ignizio. May I explain my vote? Yes, you can. Thank you. I, I just want to dovetail my comments with that of my colleague. 
uh, and basically speak of the water rates and the water bills. The concern here is when we continue the conservation movement, it continues to fly in the face of the homeowners. Uh, the bills continue to go up, and when the DEP stands before us and the water board stands before us, they say the reason why they have to go up 10, 13, 15, 19 percent is because you're conserving water. And here we have a bill that ostensibly is needed to conserve water, which that is in question from, from my, uh, my own mind as well. So what we're effectively doing here is voting on a bill that does what? It increases the water bills of the people of the city of New York who can least afford it now. Continually, we are faced with the question of why now? There is a serious economic concern in this city of New York right now with people being able to stay in their homes, with people being able to keep their jobs, and yet we in insist upon imposing additional government regulations which will cost them money and force them to lose and to have to leave the city. So with that, I vote no on 264A and, and no on 271I on all of this. Thank you. Jackson. I pass. James. Aye on all. Koo. Uh, aye on all. Copel. Request permission to explain my vote. Yes. Um, I wasn't going to speak, but in light of Mr. Halloran's uh, statements, I wish to indicate that his view is a very short-sighted one. In the short run, reducing consumption will somewhat reduce uh, the revenues of the Water Authority and thereby, it could be argued, increase rates. However, in the long run, if we don't introduce conservation measures as the population of the city increases and the demands in the city increase, clearly additional facilities will have to be built. It's actually the facilities that we're building, including the filtration plant that's being built in my district, that is, a that is a much larger source of increases in water rates than conservation. And in the long run, if we don't conserve, we'll do two things. Number one, we'll increase the need to build new facilities and new sources. And the second thing we'll do is increase the possibility of having a drought-related shortages, which we've had in the past. Uh, on a number of occasions and to the extent that we don't conserve we will have in the future. So frankly speaking it's a very short-sighted view that he, that he expresses. I think I take a much longer view and one that makes much more sense from the long term both physical and financial health of the city. So I withdraw my request and I vote aye on all. Point of personal privilege. No. 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 No, we, we don't do that, Council Member. We don't follow Robert's rules of orders. Oh. <laughs> Next. Kozlowitz. Aye, I know. Lander. Aye, I know. Lappin. Lappin. Yes. Mark Viverito. Mendez. Aye, I know. Palma. Aye. Recchia. Reina. Aye and all. Rodriguez. May I explain my vote? Yes, you may. Uh, I will vote aye, but I also would, would like to say something about the LU 194 and 196. This project is so important for the Northern Manhattan area. With that project, we will be able to build 124 affordable housing but also we are building a new children's museum for the Northern Manhattan area and also childhood program in our community where many programs, they have a 300 families in the waiting list. And I vote aye. Rose. Aye and all. Sanders. Aye and all. Ulrich. Aye and all. Vodka. Um, I'd like to explain my vote. I'm going to vote aye on all because I believe in water conservation and I believe that part of our effort to green New York has to uh, revolve around water conservation. 
but the water rates in this city have gotten out of control and there's no getting around that reality. Every year, 10 to 12 percent increases on people who can least afford it, on senior citizens, on disabled homeowners, every year. And there's no end in sight because the Water Board of the City of New York has imposed water rates that are unaffordable and indeed confiscatory. We have to address the reality that when the water meters were installed and the homeowners were given water meters, they were told that if you saved water, your rates would go down. Well, let me tell you something. The homeowners could die of dehydration and their rates would go up. That's where water rates stand in the city of New York. So I'm going to vote yes, but I think we have to tackle this issue. Enough is enough already. I do not accept that no end is in sight. I have to believe that we as a council working with the administration can do something to make sure that our homeowners in this city do not continue to pay 10 to 12 percent increases every year. It is wrong. How can we on one hand say we're conserving water and then the city of New York does not incentivize saving water? That does not go to the principle and the basis of our strategies here at the council when it comes to greening our city. So that's my explanation. Valone. Permission to explain? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm going to vote against 271A and 264A. I think the goals are, are, are noble, water conservation, but as Jimmy Vacker just so eloquently stated, um, the, the Water Board came before our committee and said that they were raising rates due to less usage. usage. They said that, and they have raised rates 50 percent in the last four years. I cannot in good conscience give them another reason to, to raise rates at this point. Um, in, in 264A with the drinking fountains, I have no problem filling my uh, container up from the fountain that exists right now. I don't need a special fountain designed for that. I don't think government needs to be involved in that. And in fact, my water bottle is made of biodegradable corn plastic with a filter. And I recommend a filter that takes out chlorine and fluoride. Until they take out chlorine and fluoride, I can't recommend drinking fountains. Years from now, you'll say Pete Vallone said it first. What, I, don't, I thought he was crazy when he said it. Chlorine and fluoride absolutely bad for you in our drinking water right now. Um, so I'm going to vote against 264A and 271A and I on the rest. Van Brema. Aye. Van. Explain my vote. Yes. In view of the impassioned uh, discussion around this issue, I remind my colleagues that the reauthorization of the water tax lien will be before us shortly. Uh, there is a bill where we can preserve uh, senior citizens, uh, look after those who are disabled to make sure that they are exempt from these rates. We have an opportunity to make it a, a fair playing field for the rest of the citizens in New York City as relate to water rates. So please take advantage of that. I withdraw my request and vote aye. Williams. Excuse this may my vote? Yes. Uh, I vote aye on all, but I, I do think this is a, at the same time, I think this is a huge issue. And I'm, I know we're talking a lot now, I'm waiting to, be, to hear about how we're going to fix the problem because I too think it is uh, ridiculous that the water rates keep going up. Uh, my mom, other constituents, myself continually have to uh, get these rates up no matter what happens. We need to definitely address this issue. Jackson. I'd be excused to explain my vote. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I passed earlier because I was talking to my colleague about this uh, exact issue that we're voting on, and especially regarding the um, four, res four introduction bills that uh, were under the Housing and Buildings Committee. And I've signed on as a co-sponsor on all of these bills because when you look at New York City and you look at our situation as far as our water, and obviously we all need to conserve as much water as possible. But with the excessive uses of water, obviously our city water system has to be expanded and protected so that all of the 8.4 or 8.5 mil million New Yorkers could drink some of the best water in our state and in the world. Um, but I do understand some of the concerns that were raised by some of my colleagues as far as homeowners and their bills going up. But I think in the long run, um, these bills will 
uh, do what is necessary to conserve water and to um, hopefully keep the price of water down. Uh, one of the issues, I guess, that I thought about while sitting here listening to my colleagues is the excessive amount of water uh, that is wasted with hydrants being open all over our city during the summer. And as you know, when hydrants are open, uh, they pour out thousands and thousands of gallons per minute. And so we need to work on that in order to serve probably over a billion gallons of water, uh, billions every single summer when the hydrants are pouring out all over the city. And I know that because where I live in northern Manhattan, I see it all the time. I call 311, and obviously we need to educate the populace about that, how important it is to preserve water. And obviously, most people don't know what it is until you actually lose it and you wonder how precious water is. I vote aye on all. Otto. Mayor Bree Temper, excuse me, explain my vote? Yes. I uh, will vote no on intro 264A and 271 and yes on all others. And uh, let me respond to the comments uh, by the council member responding to council member Halloran's comments. Notice how I did that without mentioning anyone's name. Uh, yeah. Um, let me be clear. Everyone in the Republican delegation here in this wonderful aisle is in favor of conservation. Uh, we believe the words of Dave Matthews, it's one sweet world. We want to get to the same place you folks want to get to. We just disagree as to how. And I know this may sound odd coming from the guy who, along with Lou Fiddler and some of your help, banned aluminum bats, but it's this constant mandating every aspect of our lives which has this particular row uh, a bit concerned. And um, so let lest anyone take from this meeting that the Republicans aren't in favor of conserving water or conserving the natural resources. That's not the point. It's how we get there. And it seems that with every turn, every aspect of building, every aspect of breathing, and now those glorious moments in one of the rooms in your home government is coming and knocking on the door and saying we're going to check out the throne. So this is what it's about. It's not about conservation. This is not a discussion of conservation because there is no debate. This is about how we get to where we all want to be and some of us are grown a little weary of it and that's why we voted the way we did. Thank you. Rivera. I vote aye. Speaker Quinn. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative. I was doing the negative and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 264-A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative and four in the negative and zero abstentions, and intro 271-A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, with four in the negative and zero abstentions. Discussion of resolutions, since there are no resolutions, we're going to move on to chat. Introdu oh, introduction and meeting of the bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. And now, since there are no resolutions, we'll move on to general discussion. First, we have Councilmember Delon. Yeah, I just want to say I appreciate the, the tone and the tenor discussion that we just had on the, the water conservation package. I just would, would like to, to state at this time that um, I think it's important that uh, we desegregate what these bills do in technicality as to the frustration that we all collectively feel about the water rates. I think I've had many discussions with uh, many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle on the frustration that we all share uh, with how the city of New York goes about uh, uh, dispensing the water rates to our constituents and the frustration that we have in, in trying to collect this long-term problem. That's a problem that I'm committed to and committed to working with others, including Councilmember Van, who does have uh, some bills that deal with, deal with the lien sales. But I think it's important to desegregate the need for conservation. And I also want to clear the record that uh, a lot of these bills apply to new construction. I just want to make that clear for the record. I think my colleagues did understand that. I don't want to suggest that they didn't understand it. Uh, but it does come into play for alterations. Now, I'm of the opinion if you're going to do an alteration, you're going to spend money anyway. It's your choice to make the alteration, not government's choice 
to make that alteration. So if you're going to spend money anyway, it's just our list of suggestions of how you should do it so that we can conserve water and we can go forward. Now look, my friends on the other side that I'll know well, and even some of my friends on the Democratic side that I'll know well, you know, I, I'm a, I am a Democrat, but I, I am concerned about government's intrusion into people's lives. They've heard me talk about that all the time. Uh, so I am concerned about that, and I'm mindful of that. But I'll, you know, respectfully, and I mean this with all respect, we have two members of the other aisle on the Housing and Buildings Committee. We heard no objection or none of these concerns prior to this bill being brought to the floor here today. Now, I don't mean that as a tack, gentlemen. The only suggestion that I have is if you have these concerns, I'm mindful of these concerns. I'd like a heads up beforehand so that we can bring it back, take it to the table so that we can review these concerns and that I don't have to hear it or the speaker has to hear these types of things on the floor and we can work on them. We're mindful of that. I'm mindful of it as a chair. I've privately fought with her uh, internally on a lot of these issues, but I think that they need to be brought up then and there that, so when we can actually do something about it. And I, I'm committed to that, gentlemen, and uh, to, to, to my friends on the Democratic side as well. That, that did uh, vote against it. You know, I have no problem with anybody voting against anything if it's against their core beliefs. But uh, you know, let us know about it beforehand. Maybe we can fix it, maybe we can't, and then we can have a debate about it at that time. So again, I appreciate the spirit of the debate. Water conservation is important. I think these bills will get us there. You know, will I be naive and say they won't cost anybody anything? No, they're, they're gonna cost people. This, it's gonna cost some money. But understand, the alteration is done at the choice of the end user, not at the choice of government. And new construction is done at the choice of the end user and not at the, the, the request of government. So I just want to make my uh, comments clear there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilmember Fiddler? Yeah, apropos of the water debate, I mean, regardless of what was said at the hearing, I just want to point out that so long as the city of New York is charging rent to the water board, that's the reason why water rates are, are unnecessarily high. We shouldn't forget that. Um, I do uh, want to point out, apropos of um, the anti-violence tone uh, that was set at the beginning of this meeting, that I will be uh, joining the Sandy family on Friday morning at 11 o'clock at Plum Beach uh, to dedicate a park bench in memory of Michael Sandy. Uh, a young uh, gay male who was lured by the internet uh, to Plum Beach and chased to his death. Um, apropos of that, uh, I am introducing today intro 363, which will direct the Human Rights Commission to develop a curriculum for the Department of Education to use on cyberbullying. I am sure that um, we all are aware of the recent horrible incident at Rutgers where the internet was used in the most atrocious, uh, vile way uh, uh, that uh, it resulted, in my opinion, in the death of a young male. Um, we can't, because the state law directed the Department of Education directly to include cyberbullying in their uh, curriculum, but we can, under the law, direct the Human Rights Commission to develop a curriculum for them. So I am urging everybody, uh, particularly in the spirit of today's meeting, to sign on to Intro 363 so that we can get ahead of the curve on what is clearly becoming a rampant abuse and the new technology for bullying young people in the city of New York and in this world. Councilmember Vaca. Yes, uh, I rise to ask my colleagues to sign on to Intro 379 which provides that building permits will be denied to owners who own substantial um, fees or fines to the city of New York. Right now, if you want to build a home, a house, an apartment building, a multifamily unit, and you owe two, three, four hundred thousand dollars to the city in uncollected real estate or water bills, you can go ahead and get that permit and build more and build more and build more. If we're talking about fairness, I believe that people should pay the city what they owe. 
and I'm, I want to empower the buildings department and the Department of Finance to tell anyone who owes money beyond a certain threshold that until they pay that money or enter into an agreement with the City of New York to do so under a specific schedule, those permits will not be granted those permits being granted often end up only compounding the arrears and the money owed. This will produce revenue for the City of New York. It is a positive revenue producer. But in all fairness, everyone should pay, whether it be an HPD emergency repair um, bill, whether it be an ECB violation, whether it's a water bill or a real estate bill. When we give permits, that's our opportunity to collect this money that's owed that through the years we've not been able to collect. I hope that my colleagues will sign on to intro 379. Thank you very much. We'll move on to Council Member Brewer. Thank you very much. I first want to tell everyone that this hearing is being webcast and I want to thank the gentleman who's doing it and Unic Ortiz from the Speaker's Office. We've been talking about it for a long time. Thank you. Ramon Martinez, who promised it a long time ago. Um, number two, there are a couple of legislation, pieces of legislation I'm bringing to your attention. One has to do with putting more material up on the web. Um, I have intro 362, but there are two others that Council Member Mark Guerrero and the Speaker are interested in, and it's gonna, they will all come before the Government Operations Committee um, in October 25th. Number two, Intro 361, which I'm co-sponsoring with Councilmember Halloran, Councilmember James, and others, would uh, bring to the attention those who harass by calling 311. People do, unfortunately, use 311 as a harasser, and um, we are making sure that that does not happen. So you can read it or ask us any questions. And then just finally, I want to mention that we have several interns here today. We have Caitlin O'Hagan, who is here from Macaulay uh, CUNY, and we have Joey Fong and Nina Sullivan from Baruch College. Thank you very much. Seeing no others at this point in time, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.